Welcome to the second best of five of the evening. We're on Blood Boil, spawning to the bottom right hand corner in purple, playing Protoss for P uh, playing Protoss for Psy Storm. Playing Protoss for Psy Storm. And the US. It's poison. Say that three times. One after another. And quickly. And to the top left in green, playing Zerk for Russia. It's Kiwi. So Poison going for a quick scout. Wants to see what her opponent is doing. Will be glad to have scouted this time around because there's an early pool incoming. Nothing all too unexpected. We have to admit that QB really likes to go Ling drops uh, on Protoss. She has been doing that for quite some time. I mean, every Protoss she's faced, she went for Ling drop after Ling drop after Ling drop. And Ling drops are actually pretty potent against Protoss. Uh, this map also helps because you can just link drop in right from behind here using that ledge. You can also of course link drop from right behind here into the natural base if you want so. And uh, then you could even link drop from here into here if you want to. So there are some places where you can go but the most obvious ones of course are actually this part and that part down here. So let's see. Of course, QB always being very aggressive early on. She's known to be a very aggressive player. Anyways, taking the hatchery out here. There's a pylon back here blocking that expansion. But like I said, I think QB will not even need it or does not even plan to need it. Let's put it this way. So Nexus on the way. We have the overlords already moving forward. One overlord. Seems to be moving to somewhere over here. So let's see if we can see an evolution chamber going down or not pretty early on. I don't think she will just try to break through the through the entrance. There's also no baning nest here. I mean these links can pressure her a little bit, but there's even a second zelt on the way, so they won't really accomplish anything. If poisons uh, if Poison studied some of the games of QB, especially against Koshki, she should know what she has to expect. Is going for a proxy DT shrine herself, and I really like this. Like I said yesterday, I think it was, it might actually work for Poison to go back to her old DT style, because yes, she's known to be the DT queen. And a lot of people actually expected her to play DTs. That's why she actually never used DT, has never used DT throughout the whole season, I think, or only very, very late on. But yeah, I mean, at, we now have come to a point where people might actually not even think of her building DTs anymore. Ooh, QB really having the sixth sense here, uh, scouting for proxy locations everywhere and sees that there is a Twilight Council being built over here, so unfortunately the DT maneuver is probably not going to work out at all for her. We'll lose the tech building plus the pylon, which is a really big blow already. So what Poison also knows, what could be happening, so she has the pylons in position, so that drop play won't really work for QB here. So plus one attack upgrade for QB incoming. She's still on two bases, now taking a third at the gold hatchery. And of course that pickup is just amazing for QB, to say the least. Ah, Poison not giving up yet, trying to build another proxy pylon somewhere around. But QB, okay, so looks as if QB just saw the probe moving to over to that location here and is now, of course, checking everything. Ah, already cancelled. So, no way for Poison to establish any presence on the map, which is really unfortunate for her. Did she see the gold base up? Yeah, okay, she saw the gold base coming up. Ah, yeah, there was that one Ling sawing. Uh, there was that long, uh, there was that one Ling seeing. Still, nevertheless, Dark Shrine. I mean, that was what Poison wanted to go from right from the get to, wanted to go to right from the get go. The uh, Twilight Council, of course, is dead, but before that happened. Oh, she even replaced it with another one here. 
Ooh, unfortunately, that... Oh, that Zealot was not in a hold position here! Finally, the Polar and Foot and Overcharge go through. That could have been way worse, with the Zealot not being on hold position over to the right-hand side. It's still an awkward wall here. I think it was a little bit of a misplacement there by Poison. Uh, you usually don't... Well, is that is that is that actually a tight position? It might be. Okay, never mind. It might, it might be tight. It doesn't look like it. It looks as if there is a small little gap where this... Zealot needed to stand in order to seal it off completely, but it seems as if that's not the case. So, more hatcheries out, more and more lings being made by QB. Seems as if she just wants to break through poison with pure ling power here. Upgrades going to 2 to 0 for now. Only has a few banelings around. Don't know what the follow-up steps are going to be. Puts down some spore crawlers here because of... Um, yeah, uh, I mean, oracles or DTs could be incoming at that point in time, so that's why I usually want to have them also has an overseer in place right now. Okay, there they are, the DTs, trying to get probably inside the natural base, I guess, or maybe want to break through this ice debris, but that would make no sense. No, just walks in, is not splitting up all of her units, don't know if I like that, now she is. Okay, never mind. Yeah, and uh, QB just saw the shadows of the Dark Templar here. So she sends her army back, uh, kills the one over here, has already killed one over here. And it seems as if, unfortunately, for Poison, her DT uh, rush didn't quite work out. Very unfortunate for her. Yes, also sending some over here. Is expecting some sort of warp prism to fly around and plant down more DTs all uh, over her main base and natural backdoor expansion. So getting Burrow as well, which is fairly interesting, I have to say. Also getting the Muscular Orkmans for the Hydras. I will probably switch into Hydras in uh, just a few seconds. So we'll see Lingbane Hydra as the desired composition for QB. In the meantime, Poison trying to get up her third base as well, with a few units she has, but a lot of force fields available and uh, some protection with the help of these pylons and the mothership core. QB not going for third already, but might go in a little while. Ah, Poison trying to get that to the Nagatal, but it's already being watched over. Okay, there's th still this warp gate. Yeah, looks like QB still has it. Uh, on her mind that um, if there wasn't anything back here in order to warp in the DTs, there must have been something else somewhere. Five hundred resume production. The army of QB is getting stronger and stronger. Worker, well, I mean the worker count is pretty equal here, so if Poison actually manages to hold out for a little bit longer, getting a tack up, I mean her upgrades are pretty far behind, but that was what um, QB was aiming for. So here we have it, big push through the middle. Unfortunately these stalkers are a little bit out of position here, so now of course Poison has to use way more force fields and units in order to defend this and now unfortunately trying to save herself from all of these links she unfortunately traps her own units in between these force fields the hydra's links and banelings just crushing through all of these forces very very unfortunate maneuver there by poison just moving out a tad little bit right before the army of qb was moving in if she had been able to defend at that part here rather than up here she might have been able but this way around um, QB takes the first game. Ascension to Ayura's Poison's pick. We have her spawning as the purple Protoss to the bottom right. And her opponent leading 1-0 to the top left as Zerk is QB. Ooh, Poison already moving around. Probably wants to go for some sort of proxy shenaniganry once more. I can't really blame her. I mean, we have to be fair. On paper, Poison is definitely the underdog. I mean, QB is in second place. She's a Masters 1 player with Zerk. 
uh, while Poison is uh, on rank 6 as a Diamond 2 player. So there is a skill difference, we can't really talk it away or just be silent about it. So of course, if you are the weaker player on paper, you have to think of something. You, you really know that you will probably not be able to just play a straight up macro game and win. That would be delusional. So you have to find the weaknesses in your opponent's play and try to abuse it. And Poison is just doing right this, trying her best to cheese her opponent out and uh, get a win off of her. So I really like this decision. I mean, like I said, there's there's really a, this is a best of five in a league where you can see your opponents play every week. So if you don't really prepare for them and if you don't take the knowledge you have about their play style and make it to your own advantage, then well, it's just your own fault. And I really like Poison trying her best to just do some dirty uh, do some dirty strats in order to take a win off of her opponent here. I really think that's the best she can do. Unfortunately, again, <laughs> her opponent is pretty aware of everything. And uh, QB, good in scouting, knows what's coming her way, has the pool up, already plans down a spine crawler inside her main. So more and more zealots incoming. So two zealots already out. Don't know if Poison knows that she has been discovered, but she now sends in all of her zealots. We have a few more links being sent across the map already for counter attacks. That is a really nice maneuver there by um, QB. If she manages to get these only these four or five links into the main base, uh, it can cause some disaster for Poison if she doesn't realize what's going on because she's busy um, microing her units at the front. So let's see. There's almost two spine crawlers done. We have a lot of queens. We also have the drones to protect the spines if need be. So one queen is already dead, but of course with these zealots trying to. Uh, tear down these spine crawlers. They are taking a lot of damage already. There's there are more spine crawlers in the making for QB as well. And the only thing she needs to do is just hold here. And like I said before, if you are not paying attention to your mineral line because you're busy, but nice move there by Poison. Was aware of the counter rush by her opponent, planted down a forge and built a photon cannon, but still lost a lot of workers here. And in the meantime, of course, the biggest problem is that her push got hold inside the main base, didn't even care about the hatchery down here, and never actually had the chance to just retreat with most of these um, zealots in order to take out the second hatchery. So now, QB is one hatchery ahead. Uh, not so much in workers, but also still 18 workers to the 13 of poison. She now has some links out. These, spork, uh, these spine crawlers are in position close to the hatchery. More and more links being produced and QB knows the only thing she has to do right now is to hold another push here. Uh, while poison just cannot produce that many zealots anymore because her own economy got shredded by the counter-attack of her opponent. Now trying to go into an assimilator right behind this but uh, poison does not even have a cybernetics core. So now some links running across the map once more. Don't really know what. Okay, looks like. Okay, Poison just going for the desperate last move. Is pulling the boys. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately they get intercepted. So that is like, like again, the worst anti timing. You. What a bad luck. What a bad luck. I mean, this is so unfortunate for Poison here. She decides to move out and pull the boys, but then the run by happens once more. I mean, that was just the anti timing once more. And QB takes the second game as well. Sequencer is our third map. Spawning to the bottom left, we have Poison. And to the top right, it's QB. Let's see what Poison wants to do this time around. Ah, oh, wants to expand straight away. Throwing down a pylon immediately. Is that pylon really, really blocking off everything? Okay, that's odd. This this looks like a huge as. Oh, okay, but maybe it's intentional to put the zealot in here. 
But this looks, this looks pretty wide open, I have to say. But maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can't really run through this. Hmm. Saying the probe across the map. No pool this time around. QB going for the hatchery first. Ooh. Okay, also going for the economic opening. Does not really want to risk some early pushes on this map. And an Axe is going down for poison as well. Also, I still think that's a good decision. I mean, she tried to kinda cheese her opponent early on. It didn't work two times in a row. So now she's just trying to play it straight up and see what she can do by doing that. Good decision, I think. So, Extractor, spawning pool right behind it. And maybe even an early third base, or a third base over here. I'd rather think over here. I think Kiwi will take her third over here, and will not take the supposedly safer one. Psystorm logo hovering above the Nexus. And the probe is coming home safely. Some probe wife will be very glad to see it back home. Yeah, like I said, there's the opening for the zealot. Interesting, interesting wall. So, first few zerglings on their way across the map, mostly just a scouting force. Maybe they can apply some pressure here or there, but nothing all too deadly. Overlords already flying into position and again I mean this is a map where ling drops can work tremendously especially if you drop into one of these dark areas here I mean you can just park an overlord over here send the links to here load them in load them out even elevating some of these or you can just try to break through these rocks if your opponent is not paying attention which would be disastrous for poison if that actually happened going for a stargate build straight away might actually go into her famous uh, six six oracle builds or something, uh, which he then sends across the map in order to deal some damage. Third base incoming, just in case. So the mothership core is, and now she hears it. Yeah. So was just waiting for the mothership core. Was totally aware of these links trying to nibble away that deb that debris, and now will even drive away that overlord. Ah, goes right into phoenixes. Actually, I think it's a, that's a that's a fairly risky thing to do against an opponent like QB who likes her Ling heavy play. Also, fairly interesting that QB didn't go for any overload drop whatsoever against her opponent. That's that's really interesting. I mean, like I said, I, th I think she did it like three times in a row even against Koshki, or, or yeah, at least, at least a lot of times in her games against Koshki. But now this time around, not even once. So, pilot in position to check for this debris. Overlord morphing. And here we have it. I mean, I was just talking about it. And here we have it. The dropper lord, but with only four lings, not all too many. Might still be able to do some uh, some chaos, to cause some chaos inside poison space. We'll also get the full scout, which, is, uh, which might even be more important here. Ooh, but even might not be able to unload everything. So let's see what QB does with that one link over here. Trying to get forward for a scout. Doesn't even actually need to scout those since the Phoenixes got scouted anyways. So of course QB now knows that their opponent went for a Stargate build. It's getting a bailing nest. Let's see if she really wants to break through or not. Or if it was just a preemptive bailing nest. Just in case her opponent would be going for adept play. So spore crawler already in place. More spore crawlers being built in order to help defending against the phoenixes. So let's see how well poison can play with these. Can play around with these phoenixes. I mean, phoenixes are pretty APM heavy, and in order to make good use out of your investment into these phoenixes, you have to keep them active and have to move around a lot, trying to always keep their energy very low by lifting up things and killing them. 
So let's see if Poison can actually do that. If, if a player can do that, they can be really effective, amazingly effective, actually, against uh, a Zerg player. But if you don't really make good use of them, then they might have been an investment you can regret later on when your opponent just crushes and overwhelms you with ground forces because you just didn't manage to get the damage done you would have needed to do the phoenixes. One phoenix dies already. Okay, poison trying to deal as much damage as possible. Killed one overlord and a queen at least. But only mineral units for the gas cost of the phoenix here. So picking up a few more drones, trying to kill them, spark all the firing once more. Nice little micro there. By poison here and oh, nice little Michael there, getting it out before this Phoenix dies. But there we have the counter attack at the front, and unfortunately the Zealot is not enough to really seal this off. There was just a small little space left for the links to pass by, surround the Zealot, and now are standing inside the main base. Mothership Core is a little bit out of, um, is a little bit out of. Ooh, there was even a fleet beacon here. Was a little bit out of position there, so now a lot of drones, a lot of more drones will actually die. Ugh, very ugly here. And once more, Poison just being very unlucky in this series here. I mean, this is this is really, really sad, we have to say. I mean, she was playing a great game so far, but then like these small little things like uh, she gets scouted the last minute. Um, her opponent can just move in because the Zealot is just a little bit too far to the left. So that will have an open gap there where the Lynx can surround it. And uh, she wants to send the units across the map, but they get intercepted. So very, very unfortunate there for her. This is definitely not her day to play a StarCraft 2 best of 5, we have to admit. Trying to go into one carrier at least. But I don't really know if it's going to work. I mean, the Lynx actually scouted. Ooh, and now the Hydra's already out. You're getting picked up and getting taken out. So that's a nice move by Poison there already. Trying to pick up a few more drones and avenge herself for the losses. Nice little move there again. So nice little... Um, nice little micro. But yeah, of course, that's that's the big problem. Microing and macroing at the same time is a very, very difficult task. I, I mean, very difficult with the big V and a big D. This is this is so tough to do. Uh, and I really have to stress the fact here because um, there you can see why a lot of Protoss in the so-called lower leagues, and with that I mean leagues below Masters, uh, do not really often use these APM heavy units, like I said, because you can of course mark them around and make good use of them, but if you cannot macro at the same time at home um, in the same way, it will actually put you behind instead of ahead, even though you manage to get some good kills with the Phoenixes. So now we have like Mass Hydra knocking on the front door, or actually this debris over here, and not much to defend it. I mean, we have a lot of Adepts over here that could actually deal some damage. They do extra damage against Light, but against this amount of Hydras, I mean, it's more Hydras than Adepts. That's not a good thing to see here. One Carrier trying to get in with the Interceptors, but the Interceptors getting killed almost immediately. Phoenix is not really helpful. Mothership Core gets taken out as well. GG, and QB takes the Series 3-0. to 0.